Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this press conference, which is to launch uh, this new report, the 2014 IUCN World Heritage Outlook. My name is Tim Badman. Uh, I am the director of the World Heritage Program for IUCN. Uh, and I'm here to MC this event, uh, get uh, some short presentations to introduce the report, uh, and then to uh, marshal the questions that you may have. Um, we have three people just to outline to you what the World Heritage Outlook is. And the first is the Director General of IUCN, Julia Martin Lefebvre. And I'd just like to ask Julia to say a few words by way of introduction to this product. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that the mission of IUCN is to influence policy about nature and natural resources. And, and a sustainable and equitable future. And I think that the, our, our involvement in the World Heritage Convention as one of the main advisory bodies about natural and mixed World Heritage sites is exactly what our mission tells us to do. So for me, this is really important. Uh, uh, I, I also want to remind you that this convention is now 42 years old. and. And um, among the, the list of World Heritage Sites, there are 228 which are natural and mixed sites, which IUCN's huge community of experts evaluated when they were nominated in order to make sure that the World Heritage Convention re retains the criteria, which is outstanding universal values. All of that has many, many details, but we are very strict. This is the jewel in the crown of protected areas, so outstanding universal values is important. What this is doing, and I'm so glad to be here with you today, what this is doing is looking at all of the 228 sites and assessing how they're doing. And this is something that we're going to do on a continuous basis. So it's not only that we celebrate when a new site is, is accepted and added to this amazingly important list, but it's also to make sure that the outstanding universal values are maintained. And today, that's not bad news. Nobody should think that. I mean, 63% of the sites are rated as good, doing fine, or good with some concerns which, which can be collected. And we do offer solutions. I want you, uh, you should know that about 500 of the experts linked to IUCN through various commissions and our members and our secretariat have been involved in, in assessing these, uh, how these World Heritage Sites are doing. So I think this is extremely good, very positive, again, encouraging solutions because there always are solutions. I want to just thank very much not only Tim's team, the World Heritage Program team, but all, and, and also those experts that are willing to do this, travel to the far corners of the world, do serious desk study, of course. And I also want to thank our donors, the MAVA Foundation, which is one of IUCN's framework partners, and also our place, which provided the pictures. So thank you all for being here. And congratulations for this launch. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks very much, Julia. Um, this is the first time that IUCN has been able to make a comprehensive assessment of all of the natural and mixed world heritage sites that we monitor. And it's also the first time that we are um, making assessments of sites that have a good outlook. So we've been used to doing reactive monitoring for some time. This is the first time uh, we are assessing sites on a gauge that you can see uh, shown on the screen over here. And every site, every one of the 228 sites um, has a rating, which you can also find on the website that accompanies this, uh, this World Heritage Outlook. Um, I'd like to hand now just to explain a bit more about the results um, of the World Heritage Outlook to Elena Ozipova, who is the person that takes the credit for uh, uh, in my team for having marshaled uh, so many people to contribute to this report. Uh, and Elena, could you just take us through the headlines uh, in this report, please? Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Tim. Um, so um, the IUCN World Heritage Outlook assesses each of the 228 natural and mixed world heritage sites against four possible categories, which you can see on the gauge uh, on the slide. So those are good, good with some concern, significant concern or critical. And this basically shows the, the condition of the sites and the level of threats that are affecting them and the effectiveness of protection and management. 
So the main results are that 63% of natural and mixed both heritage sites are either in good condition or uh, give us some concerns. 29% are uh, of significant concern and 8% uh, are critical. These are the main results for uh, for all natural heritage sites globally, and uh, each of these categories is based on the assessment of the threats that affect the site, uh, the condition of the values for which they were inscribed in the World Heritage List, and the protection and management how effective it is in addressing those threats. So, just to give you uh, the main results for each of these elements, um, as for the values uh, in 71 percent of natural heritage sites. The values are either in good condition or the condition is of low concern. However, uh, the World Heritage Convention operates in four, with four criteria. Um, some of them refer to, for example, geological values or uh, outstanding natural beauty or biodiversity. So the, the IUCN World Heritage Outlook showed that uh, the biodiversity sites are more uh, threatened than, than the other ones. As for the threats, the main current threats affecting natural World Heritage sites are invasive species, tourism impacts, hunting and fishing, and dams and uh, certainly climate change is the main potential threat to natural world heritage globally uh, i think this is it for me okay thanks very much elena i'd just like to uh, conclude our presentation of this uh, report by introducing mr cyril cormos uh, cyril is the vice chair for world heritage in our expert world commission on protected areas um, and now uh, animates this very large expert network who we've been able to engage with to help, th help this report be produced. Uh, the WCPA is also the main source of the experts who help us when they are giving advice to the UNESCO World Heritage Committee by sending missions uh, out to the field. Uh, and what I'd like to, ask, like to ask Cyril to speak to is, what does this report mean in terms of how we might think about the future of our work in World Heritage? We've been working on this convention for 42 years, as, as Julia said. But what should we be doing to change the way we think about World Heritage as a result of making this first global assessment? Cyril, perhaps I can uh, hand this to you. Great, thank you, Tim. Um, well, in, in terms of the, the very simple mechanics, as Julia said, the, the, the future is uh, repeating this in three years. Um, so that's the most uh, immediate pragmatic uh, reality is that we will be uh, uh, asking the World Commission on Protected Areas Experts to, to review uh, uh, the Outlook report and uh, do the next draft uh, in three years' time. Um, but what does that mean in terms of what we can do with Outlook and how we can use it to uh, do conservation on the ground? Uh, in my view, what makes this product very exciting is that it's, uh, it's a tool that, that really can be used as a menu of options for all sorts of partners to engage in contributing to the management and protection of, uh, of World Heritage Sites. So it identifies uh, threats, it identifies opportunities for strengthening management. It's something that NGOs can look to to find out where they can engage most effectively. It's something the private sector can consult to find out what they can do better to help protect uh, World Heritage Sites. It's something communities could, could potentially use. Uh, so there's a wide range of actors who can take this, uh, this outlook assessment and figure out what they can do uh, to, to contribute. Uh, I think one uh, group of, uh, of actors that, that can use uh, World Heritage Outlook um, assessments as well are uh, uh, the site managers themselves. Um, what's, what's interesting about the Outlook uh, assessment and its availability online is that a site manager who's confronting a problem in the field can now get on the website and try to find a site around the world that's addressed a similar concern and look at the solutions that have been put into place to solve the problem. So uh, what's exciting about this is that this is gonna be something that's gonna be updated um, uh, over the next three years. It's a highly pragmatic tool that people can use, uh, all wide range of actors can use to, to contribute to World Heritage Management, which is really, really what our, our mission is, is to uphold the outstanding universal value of these sites and to make sure that it's maintained into the future for the benefit of all of humanity. So, um, I think that's the, uh, the, the positive, pragmatic uh, application. I think 
it's important to take a note and also to reflect on what Outlook is not. Uh, this is not a campaign tool. This is not something that we are doing to deliver to NGOs who want to spend their time criticizing government or running uh, uh, campaigns. What, what this is intended to be is a pragmatic, constructive dialogue with World Heritage Site managers, a mechanism to engage partners, uh, because a lot of World Heritage Sites uh, do need management assistance, um, not just the critical ones, but even the ones that are that have higher ratings. So. Um, this is intended to be a constructive, productive, you know, uh, dialogue-enhancing uh, tool, um, and uh, that's really what we're, we're we're trying to use it for. And it's um, it's I think just a, a final quick point. I think it's the strength of IUCN that it has both um, the the secretariat in uh, in Switzerland um, as well as the the grassroots uh, volunteer membership. Um, through the, the, the technical expert commissions uh, working together that makes it a very uh, uh, powerful uh, conservation mechanism. So I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank so you very much. Thanks very much, Cyril. If I can just conclude with two points. One is to note that alongside the report, uh, which is what we're launching today with the results of the assessments, uh, we launched in June of this year the web platform so you can find the individual uh, assessments for each of the 228 World Heritage sites on, a, on the accompanying website. Uh, and at the end of the day, what World Heritage is about is what happens on the ground in each of these 228 fantastic uh, places. And the second is to say we're launching this here at the World Parks Congress really as a way to start a different way of thinking about the next decade for World Heritage um, and with the idea of tracking progress towards improving the outlook over time, 63% uh, is well above the average of uh, what we are seeing in terms of how protected areas are doing globally. But we'd like to see that uh, that, that figure increase uh, over time, and we're expecting that World Heritage Sites take this leadership role that they should represent uh, in the World Protected Areas movement, movement over the next decade. Um, with that, uh, we'd like to conclude the presentations, and uh, the floor is yours uh, to address questions. and. Uh, one of us uh, will try to do the best we can to answer. So if you have questions, please go ahead. If you could maybe. Well, look, in terms of something like the Great Barrier Reef, really, does your research, can your research point to it getting better or getting worse? Because I know it's, it's a significant concern. Um, I mean, it does, it does the monitoring include some sort of it getting better or it getting worse scale? Okay. And if so, what's going on with the reef? Okay. So the. Um, so the. The outlook. So each each of the sites has an, has a, a detailed assessment uh, in the three the three points that uh, uh, that Elaine has identified: the values uh, of the site, the threats that it's facing, and its uh, protection and management. The reality is that um, we are we have a regular monitoring role um, that is reactive to issues. So the Great Barrier Reef is a is a great example of a site which we've been monitoring. Um, already through the uh, the work that we do with UNESCO, um, but what we might have is a comprehensive look at all of the sites. So what what Outlook is telling us for the Great Barrier Reef, in a way, is what we already had in the system and we've already been working on over over the last several years uh, with the Australian government. What what it uh, is doing though for us is bringing a range of sites which we've not had on our radar um, into uh, into focus for us, so we get a look at the whole of the whole of the area. Um, in terms of the in the, the specific point you're raising. Uh, the assessment of values uh, looks at the current status of values and the trend. Uh, so that's the uh, that's done for every one of the sites we've assessed as well. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, just, um, sorry. So, two more question. Um, just on the uh, the results, you're saying is quite a positive result. Um, just in the kind of glass half full or glass half empty, kind of one in ten sites are almost one in ten sites are in a kind of critical phase. Um, is it realistic that that can be brought down to zero? Is that kind of eight percent figure a concern? Uh, and um, secondly, just on threats, I uh, mentioned a, a kind of a raft of threats there. Um, which would you say of them is the most pressing, and what climate change eclipses them all? Okay, I want to, Cyril. Do you want to take the first of those? Uh, I'm happy to take questions, but I, um, my goal is to also get the panel to comment. Uh, Sarah, do you like yeah, that? I mean, the first of them. <laughs> uh, just the eight percent critical. Uh, yeah. Right. Yes. Well, is that doable to get that done? 
Um, I would say yes, and I think we absolutely need to. Um, I think one of the messages that we're trying to bring forward here at the World Parks Congress is that World Heritage is really a litmus test for the conservation community, yeah. that this is something uh, that we all need to contribute to and that we all need to ensure the success of. Um, if we fail with the most iconic, important, valuable, protected areas on the planet, uh, and we can't protect those, then we fail as a conservation community. Um, and so it, it's it's our duty as a conservation community to, to contribute to the management of these sites, and it's the duty of the World Commission on Protected Areas to leverage its expertise to contribute in any way it can. Okay. I think the second part of the question was about the principal threats that have been identified, and uh, Elena can just re recap uh, the, the, uh, the threat assessment that's come out of this. this yes, report. sure. Um, so in terms of current threats affecting the sites, invasive species was identified as the most pressing uh, issue in, in most of them. But certainly climate change is the most serious potential threat. And uh, the impact of climate change is seen already in many sites and uh, will be seen probably in many more. And the other problem here is that climate change can also increase the impacts that are they come from other threats. Yeah. yeah, can I just say, uh, to add to the first question, I mean, I think this is not just a scientific work. This is a, a, a tool for leadership. So, uh, of course, as I said, you know, our major line in our mission is to influence policy. And therefore, we really hope that leaders of different countries, and they're usually not the same as, as, who in, as those who are in power when a site was proposed and was put on the, on the list. In some countries, they may still be the same. But, uh, but the idea is to make sure that they also take notice and take leadership political action. Okay, thanks. I think the next question was at the back. Yeah. Mine is also a two-part question. Firstly, to you, Cyril Link has been from ABC Radio Card Affairs. If I could ask you, you said if we fail with some of the most significant conservation sites, we fail overall. The fact that 8% listed is critical, do you see that as a failure? Are we failing these sites? Well, currently, yes. Um, but you know, it doesn't mean that the situation can't be rectified. Um, so, the you know, World Heritage Sites need to be protected the outstanding universal value of those sites. They're meant to be protected for all of humanity. They're recognized uh, and inscribed on the World Heritage List for their outstanding universal value. So we need to maintain those. Um, you know, so that doesn't mean that just because they're listed, the situation can't be fixed and that we need to, you know, design ourselves to failure. Um, we, need, we need to fix it. And the second part of the question is bringing it back to Australia, the Great Barrier Reef and Kakadu National Park, as well as the wet tropics of Queensland, all listed uh, as a significant concern. Can I just have an explanation as to why those three are of such significance uh, in terms of concern and what needs to be done in terms of policy and influencing policy to change that? Uh, if I could put a third part to the question, um, it wasn't clear to me just how uh, that rated uh, the significant concern rated previously? Did, did, uh, did for example, the Great Barrier Reef rate previously as a significant yeah. concern? Okay, so, so maybe, so uh, as we've explained, we, we've had a, a long-term role in the World Heritage Convention. The World Heritage Convention has um, li list sites and it also has a, an official list of sites that are in danger. So I think one interesting finding of the World Heritage Outlook is we've, we've uh, identified the same number of sites, the same 19 is the same number of sites as are on the list of World Heritage in danger, but they're not exactly the same sites. So we, we see some of the sites that are included on the list of World Heritage in danger at the moment are sites where perhaps there's some, there's some cause for optimism that they're moving uh, out, of, out of the danger, the danger condition. But others that uh, really should be coming into our discussion about about being listed as in danger. So there is a sort of official, an official UNESCO recognition of danger. Um, the critical, the critical uh, World Heritage Outlook is uh, a way for us to just look at how adequate the, the World Heritage List in danger is uh, is addressing is, is addressing uh, the sites that really have got the most critical threats. So that's going to be one of the points of discussion with the UNESCO committee that we also advise. Um, in terms of the specific sites that you mentioned, so I've, as I already said, for the Great Barrier Reef, I think it's, it's uh, well known and well covered that we've been giving advice 
uh, to the World Heritage Committee on the Great Barrier Reef for uh, some considerable time. The World Heritage Committee has made a range of requests uh, for action in Australia that are currently the subject of the uh, consideration that we'll be um, advising to the, to the World Heritage Committee with UNESCO next year. Uh, so this is focus on the long-term plan for sustainability for the Great Barrier Reef, which is a major exercise to try uh, from the Australian government and the Queensland government and a range of partners to look at how do we uh, group what is a clear uh, set of major challenges that have been facing the reef? Um, and as I said, outlook, this uh, new World Heritage Outlook doesn't, doesn't tell us anything new for the Great, Great Barrier Reef. But I think Kakadu and the wet tropics are uh, good examples of s something which this report is adding, which is by taking a comprehensive view, we can also see some of the other sites where there are, there are challenges uh, to be considered that we uh, haven't, haven't been talking about with the World Heritage Process. Uh, it, what's interesting with both of those, and in fact with the Great Barrier Reef as well, is we assess that there's really high quality management going on. These are all sites, in fact, every, every Australian site is assessed as having either highly effective or mostly effective protection and management. Um, but in both the wet tropics and, and Kakadu, there's a clear um, pattern of threats which are a combination in both cases uh, with principal threats related to invasive species uh, and the predicted impacts of climate change where uh, the assessment is that the scale of threat is just, uh, I guess, sort of out, of, out of reach of the, the current management interventions or at least the interventions at the time we were making these assessments. So. Um, what, what in working at in both of those cases is to really build on what is you know already excellent management, but to really face the fact that you know that's not tackling uh, some declines that we're seeing and the need for some additional uh, either um, work on how to tackle difficult threats, you know how to tackle climate change in protected areas is not an easy question, um, and what is and how to tackle invasive species, uh, you know not an easy question. So the resources, the science, the capacity are the sorts of issues that. Uh, that we're raising. I guess the last point I'd make with all of the Australian sites, um, and including the, the ones that we, we are clearly assessing as uh, good or good with concerns in Australia, is the point that Cyril makes that the, um, the tendency sometimes uh, with uh, reactive monitoring and, and uh, the, way, the way we work is uh, uh, sometimes things can be quite, you know, become quite politically charged. And what we're hoping with this more proactive approach to monitoring World Heritage areas, a more collegiate and more forward-looking approach, is that we can uh, get around the table on, on difficult issues with site managers and with stakeholders much earlier in the game so we can start to really look ahead at how a big union like IUCN with a uh, big expert network, big uh, networks of members um, can engage in a more constructive way to support success in the World Heritage Convention. Uh, do I have any other, any other questions? I don't see any, so I think uh, if there are no other questions, we have copies of the report uh, available at the front of the room. Uh, we're, all, uh, we're all here and available for a short, short period of time. Um, and the website, uh, which uh, you'll find the, uh, the web address in the report, uh, carries all of the details of the, uh, of the site assessments. Um, i just close by thanking all of the panel, uh, Julia in particular, thank you for making the time to join us. We really appreciate the uh, support, so support you've given to, to World Heritage. And uh, we hope this is really the start of a new beginning. You know, the Parks Congress is about every decade we try to set a new agenda, uh, and we believe World Heritage Outlook is our way to do that for the World Heritage Convention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I give a couple of this to the uh, Secretary of Interior of the United States? Yeah, no, I see it's out of, yeah, of course. I can take it, right? I can take it. Okay, yeah, I'll take a couple. But it's interesting that the danger is doesn't match the 19 quite.